So this example here exercises control volume analysis. So I went ahead and drew a schematic of what's going on over here. So basically you have a well insulated tank, two inlets. So you have one inlet with a mass flow rate, a pressure and a state. So it's just water. So X1 equals zero. And then you have another inlet. So you have the mass flow rate, again, the pressure. And this time you do have the temperature. And then you're told that these two combine into this mixing tank and then they exit the mixing tank, obviously at a mass flow rate that will be equal to the sum of these two mass flow rates coming in. And you have the pressure of 14.7 PSI. So a few things we're looking to find are the mass flow rate in pounds per second, the specific enthalpy in BTU per pound, and the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit all at the exit. So to find the exiting mass flow rate, or part A, we're just going to use the conservation of mass principle. So it just states that what comes in must be equal to what comes out. So if we sum our inlet mass flow rates, we have m.1 plus m.2, and then that's going to be equal to our exiting mass flow rate, or m.3. So we have 125 plus 10 is equal to m.3, which is simply equal to 135 pounds per second. All right, now for part B, we have to find that specific enthalpy at the exit. And to do that, I'm going to be using the first law of thermodynamics, which is, once again, the uh, energy balance. So we have zero equals the heat transfer minus the work plus the mass flow rates coming in times the enthalpies coming in minus the mass flow rates exiting times the um, enthalpies exiting. We're told that's well insulated, so we can go ahead and get rid of our heat transfer. And then we also have no work being done because we have no shaft creating work. So work can be canceled out. After we cancel out the heat transfer and work, we're going to have that zero is equal to m.1 h1 plus m.2 h2. And those are off the inlets. And then from the exit, we're going to subtract m.3 h3. So we have the mass flow rate at both of the inlets and we also solved for it at the exit. We don't have the enthalpies at either inlet and we're looking for the exit. So to find h1, we have two things here. We have the pressure and we also have the state or the uh, quality. So if you turn to table a3e and we go to 14.7 psi, which is atmospheric pressure by the way, and we go over to our uh, x equals zero, so saturated liquid specific enthalpy, and HF at 14.7 is 180.15 BTU per pound. And then at our second inlet, we have 14.7 PSI again, and this time 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So once again, we'll turn to table A3E, 14.696 or 14.7 PSI, and we have 60 degrees, which is lesser than the saturated uh, temperature. So we're actually gonna be to the left of the vapor dome, which would be a compressed liquid. However, you're not gonna find a pressure this low on the compressed liquid table. So we can approximate using the saturated liquid um, specific enthalpy, but you'd wanna do it at 60 degrees uh, Fahrenheit rather than 14.7 PSI because these properties typically fluctuate more so with temperature than they do with pressure. So now if we go to 60 degrees on table A2E and we go to our uh, saturated liquid specific enthalpy, we'll have 28.08 .08 BTU per pound. And now with these two values here, we have everything we need to solve for H3. So we have zero is equal to 125 times 180.15 plus 10 times 28.08, and these are very simply just the mass flow rates times the specific enthalpies at the inlets. And then from that, we're going to subtract 135. And that's gonna be multiplied by the unknown H3. Now, when you rearrange and you solve for H3, you'll have that H3 is equal to 168.89, and that's gonna be in BTU 
per pound. So now we have the specific enthalpy and we also have the pressure at the exit. So the last thing we're looking for is that temperature of the exit in degrees Fahrenheit. Now there's a few ways you can solve for that temperature. Either you can use the energy balance, except you use temperatures rather than enthalpies, or you can use linear interpolation. So I'll show you both routes. So if we use the energy balance, we'll have that m.1 h1 plus m.2 h2 minus m.3 h3 is equal to zero is also going to be equal to mcp t1 plus mcp t2 minus mcp t3 and these mass flow rates are going to correlate to those temperatures so it's one two and three so you know this entire side right over here can be canceled out into being equal to zero. You don't have to plug any numbers in because you already did that right over here. So we can go ahead and cross this out. And now on the right side here, we do have the mass flow rates at all three points. And then we have the specific heat of water in English units is gonna be equal to 1.001 .001 BTU per pound degree Rankine. And then last but not least, we do have those temperatures at one and two. We would just have to convert it into Rankine, which just means you add 460 degrees Fahrenheit and then you'd be able to solve for T3. So let's go ahead and do this. So we have zero is equal to 125, and that's pounds per second times 1.001 .001 BTU per pound degree Rankine times 671.66 degrees Rankine plus 10 pounds per uh, second times 1.001 .001 BTU per pound degree Rankine, and you multiply that by the temperature of 519.67. So that's just T2, except we converted it into Rankine. And then we're going to subtract the exit, which is 135, the mass flow rate, times the specific heat once again. And this time we're going to multiply it by T3. So here we have a bunch of numbers here and one unknown. So we can easily solve for T3. And when you do, You'll have that T3 is equal to 660.4, and that's going to mean degrees Rankine. If you subtract 460, just about, I have it exact here, and you convert it into degrees Fahrenheit, you'll have 200.73 degrees Fahrenheit. So to interpolate for that T3, what I like to do is set up a little table here. And at T3, or at state 3, one thing that we know is that for certain is that our enthalpy is going to be equal to 168.89 BTU per pound. So we need to interpolate around this 168.89. But first we need to figure out what table we're going to turn to. So we have a few givens here. We have 14.7 PSI and 168.89 BTU per pound. So let's go ahead and see where we are on the vapor dome. So if we turn to table A3E for pressure and we go to 14.7 PSI and fix it at that, we can see what the saturated liquid specific enthalpy is and saturated vapor specific enthalpy is. And once again, we had 168.89, which is actually less than uh, the saturated liquid. So once again, we have a compressed liquid. And as a result, we can interpolate using the saturated liquid specific enthalpies. So I'm going to go ahead and circle what our specific enthalpy is or what, what the closest values to it are. So once again, we have 168.89. So the closest thing to that is 161.23 and 180.15. And we're going to be somewhere right here in between these two values. And with these filled in, now we just have to find those correlating temperatures. So we'll go back to that table. And we have 193.19 for the first enthalpy, and then we have 211.99 Fahrenheit for the second enthalpy. And uh, just like that, we have all of our values here to interpolate, and if you do interpolate, you'll have just about 200.8 degrees Fahrenheit, which would be your T3, which is just about equal to the value that we had right over here from using the energy balance principle.